Hey there everyone, this is Tech Jazz coming to you with a deck tech video for Black White Vampires of Ixalan. So, um, just an update, still haven't got my, uh, camera issue fixed, so, I mean, it's, I do apologize for the angling of it, it just, until I figure out a way of fixing it, it's gonna be like this, so, I do apologize for that, but, um, it's Ixalan. We're in the first week of being in Ixalan, or second week actually, I believe. First or second. Um, either way, I'll go ahead and start off with what all's in deck and uh, go from there. So to start, we will go over our 18 creatures, starting with four copies of Vicious Conquistador, who's one black for... A 1-2 Vampire Soldier with whenever he attacks, each opponent loses one life. Um, overall, he's just pretty... He's honestly the best one-drop of any Vampire that's in standard format right now. Because you get two options. Either Vicious Conquistador or... Um, oh, what's the other one? The Duskborn... Guy, it, the white version, I can't think of its name, so I do apologize for that. Um, and then to a slight extent, there's Legion's Landing, but overall, best one drop there is for vampires right now, and what I like about him is, regardless of if he dies or not, all he has to do is attack and automatically deal one damage, which is really nice. I mean, he's always going to be guaranteed damage, so that's pretty good. Um, moving on to our four copies of Gifted Etherborn, who's two black for two three Etherborn Vampire with Death Touch and Life Link. Now he is considered probably the best vampire in format right now, and honestly, he really is. Like, I mean, he's a baby Nighthawk, and honestly, he does really well. I mean, two mana for a two three who's already above curve then give him death touch and lifelink like i mean it's two mana for a creature that's gonna be difficult to deal with i mean granted removal wise he's subjugated to lightning strikes abrades uh fatal pushes but i mean he's something that your opponent is gonna definitely want to deal with right away if not he will become a problem later on in the game um and i mean four of them because like why not i mean he works as life gain he works as a blocker he works as an attacker he works as a kill spell like he's just so flexible on how you play him and it just makes him really good uh, so moving from there, we'll go to our three copies of Yeheni, Undying Partisan. Uh, she is one black, two colorless for a 2-2 legendary creature, Etherborn Vampire, with haste. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 counter on Yeheni. Then sacrifice another creature, she gains indestructible to end of turn. Now, this is where people would probably be like, eh, why are you running that? Um, for one... We're tokening. Quite a bit of tokens. So it's not very hard to keep her alive through the game. And for two, she's really able to just be a pain to deal with. Like, I mean, she's our way of dealing with Hazaret until we can get Hazaret out of play or... She just, she can stand up to any of the gods and just be a blocker against them. And, I mean, if we're causing opponent's creatures to die through blocking, uh, removal spells, gift Aetherborn, chump blocking into a few things, killing them, she could easily start becoming a little bit of a problem to deal with. I mean, just a 2-2 two -two for 3 mana, eh. She can be a braided, shocked, magma sprayed, all that, but as soon as she gets 1-1 one -one counters on her, she gets a little bit more intimidating and a little bit less easy to deal with. So, she does have, I'd 
personally feel that she has a use in this deck. Um, and I will also explain another kind of like use I have for her later on in the video. But uh, moving from there, we'll go to our three copies of Maverin Fien, Dusk's Apostle. Uh, he's one white, two colors for 2-2, two, two, so same stats as uh, Yeheni. Uh, legendary creature, Vampire Cleric. Uh, whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. So, he's essentially, if you attack with a creature every turn, you're going to get a token, which is nice. Um, a gimmick I like to do with him is um, use Yeheni as offensive to just attack every turn and then uh, sack tokens when need be into uh, Yeheni's ability through Mar Maverin. So uh, the way that works is Ma Yeheni attacks, she deals damage, hooray, she deals damage. If not, okay. Um, but if she gets blocked, well, Maverin already has caused a token to be created through his ability from Yeheni attacking. So if she gets blocked or destroyed, just sack the token. She's indestructible to end of turn. It makes it to where... Yeheni is just harder to deal with and becomes a really big annoyance until Maverin's killed. Um, so overall, I I just also like Maverin because I mean early game if you want to swing with a gifted Etherborn or vicious conquistador, he plants a token into play that can block and gain you a life, which is pretty nice. Um, moving on from there, we'll get to the deck's true win condition, which is Sanctum Seeker. Two black, two colors for three, four vampire knight. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. So, what I love about him is it's like a five for five thing. So if you attack with five vampires, your opponent loses five life and you gain five life, which I think is nuts. And just all the way around amazing. Um, what I also love about him is he can be killed by Fatal Push, but it needs to be revolted. So that's a little bit, it might take a little bit of work to do that. Um, and then he can survive all burn except for Glory Bringer. Or obviously your um, Hour of Devastation that you'll come across. But essentially he can survive just about most of what burn has to offer granted black can deal with him and i mean there's other ways of dealing with him but just he makes it to where ren and up red can't really kill him with one spell unless they drop a glory bringer but they're going to be dropping glory bringer an entire turn after we drop sanctum seeker so um with that being said we can work around that uh, overall, he's really the win condition for a deck due to the fact that he just drop him and swing regardless with our tokens and if they die, they die, but either way we're still getting one damage, one life removed from our opponent's health and we're gaining a life out of it. If they do damage, that's even better. Our 1-1 one, one tokens just became 2-2s two essentially with lifelink. Um, overall, he's just amazing. Um, honestly, really the win condition for this deck all the way around. Um, from there, we'll go down to support spells with our two copies of Legion's Landing, which is one white uh, legendary enchantment. Whenever Legion's Landing enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink. Whenever a cre whenever you attack with three or more creatures, transforms uh, Legion's Landing. Then it turns into Adonto the First Fort, which is a uh, legendary land. Tap to add one white mana, or tap one white, two colorless, and Adonto the First Fort to create a uh, one one white vampire creature token with lifelink. Um, now I'm only running it in at two due to the fact that it's legendary, and I mean, yeah, you could run. Because you could just drop a Legion's Landing, then drop another one, get the tokens from both of them, sack one, and then just keep doing that until you have the three creatures to transform a Legion's Landing. Or other, there's obviously better ways, but like, honestly, just two, because 
it's not... One thing I've noticed with Legion's Landing is once you transform it into a Danto of First Port, not always is it easy to pull off the 4 mana for a token, especially if you're doing other things, which... And four mana for one token, there's other cards that produce way better stats for you for that mana cost. So, like, I like it in the deck, but no more than two. And that's that's really just so they work as the um, offsets for Yeheni and uh, Mavern. Uh, moving from there, we have our glorious four copies of Fatal Push, which is one black, instant, destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost 2 or less, revolt, destroy target creature with converted mana cost 4 or less, instead if a permanent you control left the battlefield. Now, this is where Yeheni also comes in, because she, if she's on the field, she guarantees revolt for Fatal Push, which is really good. Like, I mean, if you can guarantee it, regardless of what all's going on, it's just really good all the way around at that point. Um, and obviously the four of them, because we're running black and white, why not run four of them? Because it, it's gonna, it's gonna kill something in every stage of the game. Uh, granted, if we come up against, like, a Carnage Timer or something, then yeah, it loses its playability, but, like, the fact that we can... Drop your Henny turn 3, our opponent can drop a um, Ripjaw Raptor as early as turn 3 from what I've seen. So turn 4, just sack a creature token and Fatal Push, uh, do a Revolted Fatal Push on a uh, Ripjaw Raptor. Takes away one of the best creatures that... Uh, Naya dinosaurs have to offer so and on the bright side you don't even cause your opponent to get to draw a card so Fatal Push is all the way around just amazing but I don't need to say how amazing it is it the card speaks for itself uh, moving on we'll go to Costly Plunder which is one black one colorless instant as additional cost uh, to play it, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw two cards. Um, it's a slightly better version of Alter's Reap, because I believe Alter's Reap is you can't do artifacts with it. I think it's only creatures, but uh, obviously we have the creature tokens. I've already mentioned with Yeheni that we just sack the tokens for things, so why not add four cards that can draw small cards? Like that's card advantage and. Who's gonna say no to card advantage when the cost is a creature token that Mavern can easily replace for you at some point in the game? So, I mean, all the way around, it's just... It, it fits. It, for one, takes up a card slot that we... That would probably be put for something else that may not be as good, but also gives us card advantage, which is nice, and... I mean, there's this deck doesn't really get the drawback of sacking a creature. Uh, so moving on, we'll go to our second place of kill spells, which is Skyweller Shot, which is one white, two colorless, instant destroy target creature powers three or greater. Now, this is in here specifically to deal with uh, dinosaurs, uh, merfolk. If your opponent gets to having fun with one one countering them. It also deals with the Gear Hulks, um, Glory Bringer, which I think is nice that we can drop a Glory Bringer before a Glory Bringer even gets started to do anything. And on top of that, three mana to kill a creature with power three or greater, which I also want to state that the reason I picked this is because Fatal Push ends at uh, mana cost four or higher. Normally at four, anything above four mana creature wise normally has power three or higher. So with that being said, where Fatal Push cuts off, Skywhaler Shop begin takes everything a Fatal Push can't deal with. Um, and then, I mean, three mana
mana to destroy a target creature with power 3 or greater. And then scry 1. More card advantage. Now it's not the best, but I mean, scry is scry. You can benefit from it in some way at some point in the game. So I do, I do like uh, Skyweller Shop, and I do think it's great in at four. Um, moving on, we'll go to Call to a Feast, and this is our major way of tokening if we don't have Maverin in play. Um, so one white, one black, two colors, sorcery, create three tokens with lifelink so essentially you're paying four mana for a three three with lifelink on three bodies which is nice granted there's ways of killing those tokens but they're tokens they're completely expendable that's what they're meant for um a gimmick i do like to do with this deck is instead of playing sanctum seeker turn four call to the feast turn four and obviously we'll say we already have a vicious conquistador um uh, Gifted Aetherborn, Maverin, then turn 4, Call to the Feast, turn 5, Sanctum Seeker, swing with a total of 6 upwards of maybe 8 creatures, assuming Maverin has proct no, 7 creatures, assuming Maverin's proc at least once since you've played it. Actually, no, it would proc twice. So, yeah, so upwards of 8 creatures, your opponent just lost 8 life and you gained 8 life. On top of that, that's before damage calculation is even uh, assigned. So if your opponent does attack, because obviously you just went in with everything. If your opponent does attack, they're going to have to do a lot of damage to get past what you just gained. And keep in mind, all these tokens have lifelink. Uh, Gifted Aetherborn has lifelink. So your opponent is going to have to do a lot of damage to kind of recover from getting hit that hard before damage calculation and with uh, all the life you managed to gain on top of that. Um, Going from there, we'll go to our two copies of Vanquisher's Banner, which is five colorless artifact. Uh, when it enters battlefield, choose a creature type. When it, creatures of chosen type get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. Um, so more card advantage for late game. And it also pumps everything up, which I'm kind of torn on how I feel about Vanquisher's Banner, because I originally had Call for Unity in here. Now, the reason for Call for Unity is 5 mana, 2 white, 3 colorless, and it has Revolt, which is uh, whenever a creature died at the end of your turn, put a Unity counter on uh, Call for Unity, and then creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 equal to the amount of Unity counters on it. Now, the reason I was... I'm kind of iffy on either Call for Unity or Vanquisher's Banner is because of, again, Yeheni, we can proc Revolt every turn as soon as a uh, Call for Unity hits play. So with that being said, we could easily make it to where our creatures are getting like plus three, plus three in a game, and that's just outrageously hard to deal with. Now, thing is, is... Call for Unity is also an enchantment, and enchantment hate is not very strong right now. D don't get me wrong, there is enchantment hate. It's just not as strong as artifact hate. So, I guess it comes down really more to preference. Uh, I haven't really decided which is my go-to for now. Right now, Vanquisher's Banner has been working just fine, because, I mean, by the time we drop a Vanqu Vanquisher's Banner, Sanctum Seeker has won us the game, so... I mean, it's really just icing on the cake. If we have Sanctum Seeker, it makes it to our tokens, our 2-2s, our Yeheni, our Maverin, our 3-3s. Three it just, it helps. Um, um, outside of that, there's not really anything else that, like, can be said about it. Um, pre pretty straightforward, it's 5 mana Anthem, granted I would rather drop a 3 mana Anthem, but we, our turn 3 is actually kind of busy, so having a turn 5 Anthem is a pretty good topper. Like, it just cuts the mana and, or mana flow and just, it, it's a good way to kind of seal the deal for the game. Um, moving to that, I'll go to land, we are running 4 
concealed courtyards, which is uh, when it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer lands, as a white or a black. Uh, we have two Shefet Dunes, which is, uh, comes in, uh, enters, yeah, sorry, I can't talk. Uh, add one colorless to your mana pool, then pay one life, add one white to your mana pool, then pay two white, two colorless, tap it, sack a desert, creatures you control get plus one, plus one to end of turn. So it acts as our two other copies of Vanquisher's Banner, but we can use it early game and have a use for it throughout the game until we actually need to sack it. With that, we also have two Ifnir uh, Deadlands, which is a tap to add a black, tap pay one life add a, or tap to add a colorless, tap pay one life to add a black, pay two colorless, two black, tap it, uh, sacrifice a desert, uh, put two negative one negative one counters on target creature and opponent controls. Now it works as another kill spell. Um, another thing for Yeheni to proc off of for her uh, creature kill ability and then I mean it just gives us another removal for something that our opponent drops as kind of a just trying to get a chump blocker on the field. It just it's a way of getting rid of, rid of one of those or making that Registrar Alpha a little bit weaker or making um that it, it it has uses um and i mean two of it's not half bad five mana to tap sack and put two negative one counters on some which is pretty nice moving from there we have eight swamps and six planes for land um overall land is obviously more geared toward black because black is predominant color in the deck Overall, I would have to say the deck is pretty well rounded. Um, its win condition is life drain, and it does that pretty well. Granted, Sanctum Seeker is the only creature that actually provides it on a main um agenda, but like if if they get another variation of Sanctum Seeker or print something similar to Sanctum Seeker that can be used in, like, just any deck, then I think that will make Vampires a little overly broken to have two Sanctum Seeker uh, builds or card bodies, which I don't think they will do, but, I mean, you never know. Uh, overall, deck uninterrupted can win the game by like turn six um with interruptions obviously it takes longer but overall it can go up just about anything in format it has answers to ren and app red it has answers to um energy it has answers to dinos pirates um merfolk and i'll I will also get to the sideboard here in a minute because I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't see any, I don't see all the answers to all these things. So, with that being said, off to the sideboard where we have to start three Blood Craze Paladins, four in case our opponent just happens to have a uh, board wipe and is having fun board wiping, which I know um, Blue White Approach has been kind of happy with their board wipe. So, with that being said, Three blood uh, crazed uh, paladins who also, if we just want to main board him in at some point for the fun of it, Yeheni could easily make him big just by sacking a few tokens. So uh, that's a plus one. Um, from there, we have two Ashes of the Abhorrent, which is one white, one colorless. Uh, players can't cast spells from graveyards or activate uh, abilities of cards in graveyards. Whenever a creature dies, you may gain one life. Now, between this and uh, Sentinel uh, Totem, I picked Ashes of the Abhorrent, again for Yeheni, because we're sacking creatures, we could get a little bit more life. If our opponent's losing creatures, we gain a little bit more life. And, I mean, it stops um, Godfather's Gift. So, and it also stops um, Scarab God, so, I mean, might as well. Two for one at for two mana. That's pretty good. Uh, 
than for when we're dealing with uh, like aggro early game ran and red type decks when bantu's last reckoning destroy all creatures lands don't untap during uh, your next untap step which does suck honestly but if we can drop a land turn four and go right into a call to the feast we could easily make a comeback off that so uh bantu's last reckoning is actually pretty good uh, from there, we will go down to our four copies of Cast Out, which is one white, three colorless, enchantment, flash. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent, uh, opponent controls until Cast Out leaves play, then cycle, discard it, draw a card. Um, I like Cast Out because for one, it has flash, and for two, it's a god killer. It can deal with those gods that we don't want to deal with. And that's always a plus. Um, it also can deal with Planeswalkers like Varaska, who's going to possibly become a thing. It can deal with uh, Jace, who might also become a bigger thing. It can deal with Chandra, uh, Torch of Defiance, who's a really big thing right now. Um, all the way around, it just it, it's good for a deck. I like it. Um, and then on top of that, more... Uh, draw tech with cycling so that's also a plus from there we have three subtle wreckages or uh, as some have been calling it uh, wrath of exile uh, which is just a really big uh, full board path to exile um a lot of people have been like very iffy on this card i personally love it because yeah you're you exile like four or five creatures from it, your opponent gets four or five land. But, I mean, main board, we already have a Fatal Pushes, Skyweller Shots, and Gifted Etherborn. Plus, if near Deadlands, we can easily kill whatever it is they're going to drop after uh, Settle the Wreckage. So, with that being said, I do like it. Um, If I do drop it down from three, I'll drop it to two and cause another Bantu's Last Reckoning, or maybe a Fumigate for the extra life gain, because, again, Vampire Gimmick is life gain right now, so that's nice. And to finish our back row, or our sideboard, we have two builds of runes. Sorry, the angle sucks here. Which is a tap, add a colorless, or tap to tap it, sacrifice it, destroy target non-basic land. An opponent controls each player, searches their library for a basic land card, and puts it onto a battlefield um then shuffles his or her library uh field of rune is in here to deal with things like legion's landing and obviously the other four colors the red one blue one black and 